And welcome back to the Texas Longhorn YouTube channel. I am your host, Anwar Richardson. Before we get too far into this video, please hit like, please hit subscribe. Uh, make sure you leave uh, some comments in the comments section because we definitely want to hear what you have to say and hear your feedback. Welcome to the first installment of the 40 Acre Dash. This is going to be the segment where we give you some quick hitter Longhorn news. Won't be in the, the typical long segments, but just some quick hitter things that I think you guys may want to hear or anyone else who's on the channel may want to chime in and do the same thing. So it's interesting. When I was doing your Drunk Uncle Sports podcast this week, certain topics started to come up and, you know, really started one of the people talked about the Ethan Burke and, and Michael. And I started thinking to myself, you know what? I will be asking about Ethan Burke this week. And so on Thursday of this week, and this is August 25th, 2022, just in case you're seeing this, whether it's this week, uh, six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, whatever the case may be, this is when we're recording it. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian had some media availability, and it was interesting because when you start thinking about the freshmen in this class, Think about all the people that we've talked about. We've talked about a lot about Kelvin Banks, and, and rightfully so, everything that he's been able to do to kind of work himself in the mix, and especially kind of be that person who's going to be on that left side. DJ Campbell, again, another outstanding offensive lineman, person that obviously looks like he's going to be a starter at that right guard position, Cole Hudson, and what he's been able to bring. We think about some of these other freshmen that we've talked about. Savion Red, that guy has been an absolute baller. And, it be, and like I told you before, people are comparing him to Debo Samuel and what that may entail for him. We don't see, know what that's going to mean, but we know there's high praise for him. Brandon Thompson, a young man who's still learning, but we know he's seen him. We've flashed. We know this guy's got all the potential in the world. Uh, and we know it, it's just a matter of time before he's a force. And of course, we also know Malik Murphy is always around as he's green, green, young and being groomed and it's learning. And so when we start talking about everything that I've learned, one of the first topics that I wanted to ask you, I've talked about, and I'm going to get back to Malik Murphy, but I asked Steve Sarkeesian about who? Ethan Burke. Again, he's a person that I know you guys have been talking about, uh, you know, amongst yourselves. And it is about time for us to have that Ethan Burke moment to really be able to talk about, because he's a guy I was extremely high on coming out of high school, coming out of Westlake. A person that was on a team that, uh, as as a junior, uh, they were finished sixteen and zero. I know fourteen and zero that season. Excuse me. Uh, that's when they defeated South Lake Carroll last season, sixteen and zero. So I love guys like him who come from winning programs who know how to win. Who also played lacrosse. If you know anything, if you know someone that plays lacrosse and has that footwork involved, that those kind of guys is what you want on the defensive line. So the question to me was. Where is Ethan Burke? Because we have heard a lot of reports about Ethan Burke being uh, a person that is on the, running with the twos. I've seen it in person at a few practices running on the twos. So I asked Steve Sarkeesian, hey, break down Ethan Burke to me. And this is what Steve Sarkeesian said. He goes, Ethan has been a, just a welcome addition to the team. He's a guy who is not here in the spring but got here in the summer. He's got a lot of length. He's got a lot of natural rushing ability, very tough-minded kid, and he's found a way into the two deep. That's the important part, right? Found a way into the two deep. And when he's in there, he does some really positive things. So we're encouraged by him. I think the beauty for Ethan is he's got a lot of room for growth. I think his best days are ahead of him, but he's definitely made an impact. So for those of you who want to buy some stock into Ethan Burke, I say go ahead and buy it now because you probably can get it on the low and it might be some Bitcoin for you in the future because I think Ethan Burke has got all the potential in the world. I think when the time, when his number is finally called, first of all, we see his, the guy's on the two deep and he's only been here since the summer. Imagine what that's going to look like a year from now, two years from now. Ethan Burke, high praise for him. Keep your eyes out for him, obviously, as well. Another person uh, that I decided to ask him about just to get kind of get a little bit of an update on was Justice Finkley. Because, look, we talked a lot about Justice in the springtime. And then we hadn't really heard his name a lot in the summer and, of course, in training camp. So I wanted to know, hey, coach, what's going on with Justice? And he said, Justice, I just met with him on this. He goes, I thought he got off to a little bit of a slow start in camp. And he's talking about training camp comparatively to how he ended spring ball. But I think he has picked up. But then he said the key thing. 
He said, I have to remind myself every time I talk to Justice, he's very mature, but he's still a true freshman. There's still a lot of growth for him, too. Sometimes we hold those guys to a different standard because they were here in the spring, but inevitably, he and Ethan Burke are still true freshmen growing together, still true freshmen together. Big future, big upside for him. He's a person, and we look at Justice Finkley, we know what that potential is going to be. I think Steve Sarkeesian hit the nail on the head right there. He's still young. Even though he flashed in the spring, hey, this is still new for him. Training camp is still new for him. There's still things that he's got to get used to. But this is a bright young man, a bright individual. He's a, definitely a person that don't write him off yet. He's still young. Let him grow. Let him develop. But I wanted to proceed. He's 100% right uh, in that. I also had to ask about my main man, Michael Taft. Give that man a scholarship, please. Give him a scholarship. I Free more moral Jomo. Give Michael Taft a scholarship. That's probably too long of a hashtag, but we'll figure it out. But I did ask about Michael Taft, the walk-on from Austin Westlake, a guy who we know made plays uh, in a state championship game, a couple of big, big plays, but always made plays. And a guy who could have gone to a lot of different spots but decided to walk on here at the University of Texas. I asked him about Taft as well. He goes, Michael Taft is kind of a bit of a Swiss Army knight. He's a guy that can play multiple positions, very smart, great leadership. He's a guy who, as a walk-on, is on our leadership council. I didn't know that until Thursday, that Michael Taft, a walk-on, is on the leadership council. He goes, I think he's got a great voice, and he finds a way. He's got a knack for finding the ball and making plays, whether it's on defense or special teams. Get the man a scholarship. But, you know, it says a lot about Michael Taft. It says a lot about what this young man has been able to accomplish. It says a lot about him not just taking a woe is me. I'm going to be a walk-on. I'm just here for the ride, just here for the education. But he comes out. When I talk to people on the team, they say he is a guaranteed baller. You know he checks the boxes. I've seen him in practice. Michael Taft's a guy you can't sleep on. So Michael Taft is someone for you to be very excited about going into the season, whether it's going to be on special teams, maybe somewhere in the two deep. But you know Mike, they can do anything with Michael Taft. And for him to be on the leadership council says a lot. The last one in our 40-acre dash is going to be Malik Murphy. Basically, I asked Sarkeesian, what's the plan for Malik? Because, listen. Once the season starts, as you guys may or may not know, you've got to focus in on the starter getting all the reps. And then, of course, Hudson Card getting the backup reps. you got to figure out what to do with a guy like Malik. Uh, and he basically said, look, he's going to be on the scouts team, okay? He goes, you have to get some of that scout team work because that's what keeps uh, the speed up for them when they go against that first team or second team defense. All in all, continue to develop. We, we got to dig into what the things are that we need him to work on. Um, but he says we got to keep pushing him to, to keep going. But he also said the key thing, he said he got to celebrate the small victories. Because when a guy's on a frontline player, the season can be long. So you want to be able to celebrate the small victories, not for just for the quarterback, for anybody. Essentially, hey, listen, just because you're not in there, you're not, in, you're not starting – with the little things that you're able to do, as I knock this mic around everywhere, but the little things that you're able to do, that's what you have to celebrate. So listen, that's kind of your update for some of these young guys here. Ethan Burke is doing the damn thing. Michael Taft, clear, is doing the damn thing. Justice Finkley, don't give up on him. Still a young man. They still believe he's doing the damn thing. He sure as hell did the damn thing in spring. And we know a guy like Malik Murphy has a high ceiling. Hey, listen. Thank you for watching the 40 Acre Dash. Hey, it's your main man, Amar Richardson. Please hit like. Please hit subscribe. Appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Stay tuned for all the great things on Orange Bloods, and I will talk to you guys soon. Till then, later.